Hey guys, my name is Chris Ware and welcome to another episode of Comment Commentary, where I read out your comments, answer your questions, and uh, just do a little bit of follow-up on the videos that I've been creating, because as any creator knows, the second you upload a video to YouTube, you suddenly remember of a very important thing that you meant to include in that specific video. It happens to all of us, so it's nice just to have a bit more of a casual show where I can connect more to the subscriber base of this channel rather than casual passers-by, because most of the views on this channel are actually from, from non-subscribers, uh, which is quite good. It's a good sign that, that the content on my channel is, is, um, is sort of actively being sought out by uh, by by new people and it means that I uh, it's pretty good for my subscriber count I gotta say um, but uh, all of that aside um, it's you know I, I make videos because I enjoy doing it and I enjoy doing it because um, it's it's a good way to connect with a lot of people uh, about um, you know some really sort of niche and academic subjects something that certainly I can't do in a, in a small country town as much as I loving it love living in a small country town it's 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 kind of a bit traditional i think is the um you know it's, it's sort of a, it's perhaps not the most bleeding edge of places to live but man the uh, the scenery is absolutely beautiful anyway um there's going to be a slight change to the format of this segment uh, i'm going to be now reading comments and answering questions from any of the videos on this channel uh regardless of sort of when I made the video, uh, just all new comment, not necessarily all new comments, but new interesting comments I'm going to read out and comment on. Okay, so with our first uh, comment is from Shorty and Chelsea, uh, and one of them says, I am reporting Linux OpenSUSE in the School for Our Presentation Project. I just want to know uh, what is the OpenSUSE server and OpenSUSE desktop minimum and recommended system requirements? Uh, yes, this is one that I, um, uh, this is a detail I omitted from that video, unfortunately, but um, there is a hardware requirements page on the OpenSUSE website, OpenSUSE 42.1. Uh, it says that the recommend, uh, the requirements should be met to ensure smooth operation of OpenSUSE Leap. So this is sort of the latest and greatest um I don't want to say worst case scenario, but this is this you know like Leap is going to require more system resources than any of the previous uh, versions of OpenSUSE. So this is a good idea of sort of recommended, um, bordering on on minimum requirements. Uh, Pentium Four one point six gigahertz or higher. Uh, they say a Pentium Four two point four gigahertz or higher um, is recommended. That's pretty low. Uh, nowadays, central processing units and computers don't seem to be the the main show. I've got a a quad core up in my 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 daily driver, and that's a that's a a processor which is about four or five years old, and it's still running strong. It was the fastest processor on the market at the time, or at least in the shop that I was buying it from, not on the market. Uh, but it's it's served me very very well. It's an AMD actually, and um and I gotta say. It was it was very good value for money. AMD processors, at least at the time, and I assume still are, uh, significantly cheaper than Intel. Uh, but I find that you more or less get the same bang for your buck. There are a few things that Intel processors can do I th uh, that, that AMD ones can't. I think the the, the one that immediately comes to mind is that uh, is there some kind of uh, pass through when it comes to virtualization that can only be done on Intel processors. I could be wrong on that one. But um, but for all intents and purposes, I generally, if you know, when when I buy a new processor for my daily driver, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm going to probably be leaning on an, an AMD processor again. I've had zero problems with it, and it's uh, you know it's 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 cheaper. Okay, second uh, comment. Uh, okay, I'm not going to read this out um, verbatim. Uh, but it, because I get comments like this just so regularly, so regularly, and they're on older videos. This video in particular is, is, is about two years old. And, um, it's people who think that they're leaving constructive criticism by saying that I need to get to the point faster. Uh, because when I was making videos two years ago, I used to have like really long introductions. And even though I consider this channel to be a, a tech blog rather than anything more than that, 
Uh, a lot of people sort of will come onto this channel and and and, and possibly expect more than just uh, what a tech blog can really offer. And specifically at this time was when I was doing very long introductions, and I I didn't have my patter down that that well. Like I I wasn't as as a concise speaker as I am now. Uh, I still do the longer videos. You know, I mean, ten minutes is still quite long for a video. Uh, but this is a this is a niche channel with in depth content about. You know, videos are going to be as long as they need to be. Uh, but that being said, two years ago when I was making videos, uh, they were longer than they needed to be because I just wasn't as good at making videos. It's as simple as that. Um, but that's not really the point. I mean, the point, you know, the criticism is is legit in terms of that. I get a comment once a day, which pretty much usually says, get to the point faster. I lost interest in seven minutes. What are you doing talking for 40 minutes on X subject and all this kind of stuff? Um, I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir here, and, and this is just a little moment that I'm I'm just uh, venting. But how constructive can constructive criticism be on a video that's two years old when I've made over a hundred videos since then? Like you don't care about giving constructive criticism. You're you in the, in the same way that I know that the the person leaving this comment isn't going to be listening to this um this podcasty thing this segment it, it's it's just constructive criticism on a two it's i don't know and it, and it, the thing is it is quite irritating on a, on a, on a on a sort of personal level because i get it so often and i can't change it some videos i go back and i change the title to reflect the you know the content a bit clearer uh sometimes i will use the youtube editor to to cut out the introduction i've done that on a few videos but oh, you know, this isn't this isn't like a a written blog where I can edit and change and whatnot. Um, anyway, yeah. uh, Richard Fortman says I've been running Opera for years and it has never crashed on me. This is on the Chrome versus Firefox Battle of the Browsers video. Uh, except I always get made fun of for using it. Lol. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Opera is. I've used it a number of times a long time ago, um, and the closest thing I've used to, to, to Opera lately is Vivaldi, which I, I don't know if that's the same. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head if Vivaldi is, an, is the, uh, you know, like like Opera reinvented or, or whether or not Opera is even still around. I don't know. Um, I don't doubt that Opera is, is a good browser. I don't doubt that Valdi, Vivaldi um, is a good browser. It's just that they're not open source. And Whereas I'm willing to overlook open source on some types of software, games being the 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 the, the immediate go to one, because games can be finished in a in, in a way that you draw a line under them. You know, you finish your game, you patch it a few times, and you draw a line under it. Providing that you believe uh, that game is safe, and and providing that you trust the developers of that game. That's for all. That's going to be. That's you know the the. I, I'm personally happy with that. I know that some people, you know, w will probably not be. And I know that there are different ways to, to, to minimize the risk. You can even, you know, for example, using a separate games machine from the machine you use to do your taxes or whatever. And these are all um, good good points. And, and it's you at the end of the day who has to make that decision. Uh, but from a, from a personal standpoint, I prefer that games be open source, for example, but but it's not a prerequisite. And I do run um, the proprietary NVIDIA drivers, which I damn wish they'd open source and all that kind of stuff. But um, but when it comes to a browser, that to me is the gateway to the internet, and the internet is is a dangerous place. And you want you know your browser to be your best friend, and to me that's where where open source matters most. Even my extensions, I always check to see if my extensions. Uh, are open source and, and often I'll audit the code on my extensions myself um, if if uh, if, it, if it's written in something I can understand and it's on GitHub um, because it, I mean like because because auditing code for a browser plugin is is like you you're you're glancing through three or four pages of of JavaScript for, for most of the time. Um, let's see what's another good comment. Ah right okay so uh, camel cased says thanks for the video lxqt seems to be a great project and can't wait to get it completely stable and official at least at version one so this is thoughts on uh lubuntu oh and uh this comment sort of expands a little bit more on themes it's quite a long comment i'll just click the read more button 
Um, they say they like the Windows theme because it's flat and polished, um, and the Linux UIs tend to look a little bit too bleak or over 3D styled, uh, distracting shadows, glow effects, that kind of thing. Um, uh, and okay, so that's yeah, this is a really insightful comment. Of course, I'm going to put it up on the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, that is kind of true, actually. One of one of the gripes I do have with Linux is that it doesn't look as 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 good as it could. And when I say good, I don't necessarily mean fancy shadows and animations and stuff like that. I just mean a good theme, a solid good set of themes. Theming is something I think that the Linux you know ecosystem has done terribly. You've got different themes for like you've got GTK themes, you've got QT themes, you've got desktop themes for KDE, desktop themes for Cinnamon, um, you've got desktop themes for LXQT. It, it gets, you know, and, and then there's GTK themes that break over here and all this kind of stuff. It's, it's, it, it requires an investment of time to make your system look the way that you really want it. And, and it's going to, you know, it, it's not always easy. Sometimes it involves going into, uh, you know, hidden directories and all that kind of stuff. And whereas people like the majority of people listening to this and, and, and the majority of people involved with this channel will have no, no problem actually getting that done. But it's it's another thing that stops it from from hitting the mainstream is that it's just too difficult to do something that's incredibly easy to do in Windows. Um, some distros have great theming out of the box, and I give them extra points for that. I quite like the Vertex theme that Manjaro comes with now. I quite like the Arc theme, uh, which is a flat theme, which is a little bit more um, similar to sort of Windows 10. Camel Case might like um, Arc. And new mix, which are two flat themes that I really like, um, and of course icon themes as well. That's another thing you got to throw in there. Uh, pointer th uh, cursor themes, all that kind of stuff. So it'd be nice if there was a way to to make this a lot more easier uh, and a lot more straightforward, uh, and maybe even have themes that go like there are themes that that transcend QT and GTK. So Vertex, for example. Um, works uh, Breeze, I think, uh, also works on GTK, and I don't know if that's a new revelation or what, but. Uh, theming is complicated, and it shouldn't be. Um, it would be not. It would be interesting if, like, distributions would come out with a theme and then disable the the alteration of themes, or make it so that you'd have to do something. You know, you'd have to unlock uh, the ability to change themes. Uh, for example, actually, like how they do it in GNOME. Actually, uh, with uh, it, it, GNOME comes with Adwaiti, Adwate. I, I uh, the, it comes with the, the the GNOME default theme, or the GNOME default theme rather. Um, and you have to install GNOME Tweak to, uh, to to change the themes. So you know that's 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 made it easier by by just cutting out of the equation. Not necessarily the way that I would have done it, but I kind of see where they're coming from, and I I, I think that it, it's a justifiable position to be in, a justifiable uh, uh, way to go. Um, another comment. Uh, this one is on the Pro Microsoft podcast episode. It's from uh, Will Roby. Uh, he says, as a geocacher, I can say, Chris, all the Pokemon Go players make good distractions to keep people looking away from me uh, while I go for my caches. So, um, yeah, that's that's essentially how I've described Pokemon Go. And I, I, I don't play Pokemon Go because I don't have a smartphone. Uh, so I, I could possibly get it on my tablet and catch three Pidgey or whatever. But, um, you know, I mean, it's it's not a game I have a problem with. Um, I know whenever there's a big craze, there's always haters and detractors. But um, it's just, it's not something I'm particularly interested in. But when people ask me about it, uh, living in an old-fashioned community, but being the techie guy, um, in a lot of circles, um, people ask me about these kind of things, and uh, it's it I, I you know it's a treasure hunting game, isn't it? Really, I, every description I've seen of Pokemon Go is quite long and quite convoluted, and even on the podcast, uh, the, I think the first podcast where Matt describes it to me, he describes it very well, but it still takes him about five or ten minutes. Um, but uh, but there you go, it's a treasure hunting game with a Pokemon theme. There you go, Pokemon Go described in a sentence. Uh, figure out Linux with a pretty cool um, avatar there uh, says uh, on the video why I'm ditching. Yeah, this is this is on why I'm ditching Linux Mint for Ubuntu. Um, 
Why the hell are people asking why you didn't make the point in three minutes? Man, that video was like a conversation between Linux nerds on the subject over a cup of coffee. That's exactly what made it great. It hits a nerve, you did everything right with that video. Don't you let them fool you. Um, thanks. Uh, comments like this actually mean a lot more than people tend to think because when you get all, like, when you get all negative comments, or when you get like a large number of negative comments, uh, you know that they're not necessarily representative of everyone's opinion. You can tell that from the like to dislike ratio on the video. It's just that it's it's uh, pe people like to moan and bitch, and they just like to leave a you know a snotty comment and then sod off. So so uh, you know it, it kind of like it hits a nerve with me too because I set out for this channel to to be a a, a blog, a conversational channel, not necessarily a how to channel, not even necessarily a review channel, but. Um, but really just just a place for for Linux nerds to talk about uh to Linux and what I do kind of like about this channel is this channel seems to have uh, set itself in a like an intermediate category of Linux user so we're not really super basic Linux users where uh where where we're stuck on like Linux mint and too scared to try anything else but we're also not like uber advanced hackers that run gentoo i'm sure some of you are but we're, and we're a good spread um not just in the distros that we use but in our um backgrounds and where we're from i'm really quite impressed to not impressed uh, i'm i'm really quite glad that my that, that people watch my videos all over the world there are very few countries where people don't watch my videos in like haven't watched a video in the last month there's like it, my video hits like 90% of the world it's remarkable and it's amazing so um hello to everyone that's not from a english speaking country i guess really um I, I I feel that you guys probably get overlooked by large. I feel like the internet is very like Americanized, and uh, and I, and I can imagine people not being from America to be a bit irked by that sometimes. Particularly if you're like from a non-speaking part of the world. Like as a British person, and I imagine the feelings the same for like Irish people and Australian people and Canadian people. Uh, you know where where English speak where everyone around you sort of speaks English most of the time. Um, the Americanization doesn't always, you know, it doesn't necessarily wholly come in because we still look for the things that we want to look and, and look for and read about the things we want to read about. Um, and I suppose, like when I say Americanization, I, I what what I suppose I'm really meaning is the the English language sort of part of the internet being sort of really large and focused on and, and whatnot, but. Um, but I don't know that from the other side of the fence because, of course, I only I only speak English. Um, uh, my knowledge with other languages is hot. It's pretty terrible. It's pretty. Terrible. I'll try when I can, but man. Uh, but yeah, thanks for thanks for that really nice comment. Um, I feel like I have got better at being more concise, and nowadays um, I try and make like the 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 initial point in in as soon as I can, and then expand on it. Rather than just shorten the video, I, f I feel that that seems to to work better, and um, and YouTube seems to like that format as well because it measures things on minutes watched, uh, which I like. I can I can please both people that way by having the summary of the video at the beginning, where the people that have short attention spans will just click off after three minutes, and then I can have the expanded version on the back of that, which you know, which 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 people that are interested in in more deeper content can uh, you know can go. Uh, Wolf Jägerstein um, says that I still use IRC. It's better than Facebook, in my opinion. That is true. Um, now I think it must have been about three years, or at least at least two years since I deleted my Facebook account. Not once have I regretted it. Not one single time. Man, how often do I hear about people like in the real world just complain about Facebook drama to the point where it's like, I made the right decision. You know, it, it's it's a waste of time, and I and, and I know people say, well, I need it to keep in touch with with old friends, or I need it for this, or I need it as part of a group project. Y you don't, you don't. I like as someone who doesn't own a smartphone, who doesn't own their own car, who you know, like I'm not a big like ownership kind of guy. I don't own that many things. You don't. You'd be surprised with what you don't need, <laughs> and you'd be surprised how much money it is. Uh, top advice: If you want to save money, try and share a car with someone. That saves that saves so much money, um, especially if you're like me and I, you work from home and you don't drive that much. Owning a car is 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 ridiculous. But 
Um, and hell, that's a, bit <laughs> that's a bit of a tangent. But people will say they need Facebook. And I've been listening to people say that they need things all the time. Um, I, uh, I hesitate to say this um, on, on this channel because it's not wholly relevant and it ten tends to rub people up the wrong way, but I'm a vegetarian. And um, it doesn't come up in conversation that much because, surprise, surprise, it's most people don't care, uh, which is fine. Uh, but... Um, the number of people that have said to me that they need meat <laughs> is, uh, I, it's, it's, it's ins like the, 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 suddenly that the, the, they'll have this sort of like self-invented medical condition. If, if, for, for one reason they, or another, they, they can't eat meat, you know, as, as if like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years of human evolution hasn't sort of evolved us to, to be quite diverse with our diet. Like that's, that's the thing with the human race, isn't it? That's our survival thing. We're not fast. We're not strong. We're not good swimmers. We can't really climb trees that well. So how the hell have the, has the human race survived as long as it has? Well, for the most part, you know, we, we were better climbers. But the fact that we have um, digestive systems that can, uh, you know, that, that, that can eat lots of different things, you know, that's a, that's a, that is a survival wild card. Uh, absolutely. And of course, you know, we live in a, in, in a modern age. So, so you know, it's, it's like, um, you know, sort of like... I don't know. I'm going into a going into a bit of a tangent on vegetarianism now, but like you know, pe people will cl you know say that like the vegetarian diet is unhealthy for one reason or another, and it's like the vegetarian diet is like all other diets. Like there are healthy ways of doing it, and there are unhealthy ways of doing it. Yeah, you know, you might have to be conscious uh, conscious of of, of 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 getting certain things, but I'm not particularly conscious of what I eat, and I and and you know doesn't bother me. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. Um. You don't need Facebook. Point of that's that's point point of the ramble. Point of the ramble. Uh, next comment from Jose Zafarino. Uh, I got a little Celeron two gigahertz quad core. Cinnamon seems a little heavy for it. I'm going to try Mate. Uh, this is of course on the Linux Mint seventeen review. Um, good call. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's a wiser of the choice. Um, the XFCE version of Linux Mint 18 is out now, so that might also be worth a shot. Uh, I am reading my comments on a laptop now, which is running Manjaro, the i3 edition, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with that. That is like it's it's completely top notch. One one minor criticism of it is I don't like the default cursor they give you, but you can change that. Uh, but other than that, man, I like that. That i3 is the most polished desktop. And this laptop that I'm reading comments from is rubbish. It's rubbish. It's a throwaway laptop. It's years old, years and upon years old. And I stick on i3 Manjaro. And I mean, it still struggles with things like heavier applications because, of course, you know, your desktop environment and your operating system of choice are definitely factors in this, but also like what browser you're using and what background applications you've got were running also factor into this. Um, I'm using Chromium because I use Chromium on my daily driver and I can sync up my my bookmarks and whatnot and my um, my add-ons, but it doesn't run particularly well on this laptop. I mean, I can I can scroll and and read comments, so that's all I really need it for right now. But I would usually choose maybe a lighter browser if it was someone else's laptop. Um, but yeah, give that a go. Like if you've, if you've got a laptop that's a bit slow, try, try Manjaro i3. You get latest software and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's real fast. But again, like, uh, and also it, uh, one thing I do like about it is that it tells you, it gives you, um, keyboard shortcuts. It tells you the keyboard shortcuts out of the box. So that's good. Nathan Jennings says on the Debian 8.0 Jesse review video, I'm a Linux Mint person, Linux Mint 17.3 64-bit on my ThinkPad T410. Linux Lite 2.8 is another goodie. I have Linux Lite 2.8 32-bit on an old crappy ThinkPad. Um, I don't need the latest and flashiest, just the most reliable. I prefer efficient tech over flashy high maintenance tech. That's a great point, Nathan. That is a uh, that is definitely that almost sort of sums up why there is no such thing as the best Linux distribution. Uh, Linux distributions are diverse because there are a million and one different use cases and a million and one different people who use them. 
And if I were to set, if I when I set up a laptop or a computer that belongs to someone else who have asked me to to install Linux on it and set them up with Linux, um, I will go that route. I will go with Linux Mint or a long term support version of Ubuntu or uh, possibly Linux Lite. I've, I, you know, I I think I might have tried Linux Lite once in a virtual machine and and. And and I think I might even have been like I think I might even have liked it. Uh, I should do a review on that at some point. But I've got like my review list for distributions is long. It's real long. Um, let's see. But uh, yeah, like low maintenance machines are kind of important for people like me who who often maintain friends and family members' machines as well because we can't be fixing every single error. So like installing a rolling release on someone else's computer is it's it's not really an option. I I I've heard of people uh, try it. Like they put like a Arch or an Arch based distro on a on a friend's uh, laptop, and and then every time they're they're in the vicinity of that that laptop, or every time they're maintaining that laptop, maybe once every six months, once a year, they'll just do Pacman um, dash s y y u and and update there and then um, and then fix any necessary. Uh, regressions or whatever. Uh, that's one way to go. I'm not brave enough for that. I'll just stick on an LTS of, of usually Lubuntu actually, uh, because Lubuntu is fast on system resources, so t- people tend to be impressed. It's obviously got the full Ubuntu library, um, and also it's you don't mess, you can't mess it up. Stick someone in front of like a Mate desktop and things like that, and Mate desktop's pretty good. It's, it's a it's a great desktop. I'm not criticizing it, but. Um, but it is a it is a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit more full featured. There's a lot of bells and whistles on there that a lot of people don't really want and need. Lubuntu and LXDE is uh, uh, is it's a great distribution, a great desktop environment because it's very simple. Because most people, all they need is something to launch their applications and something to put their Windows in. And LXDE, LXQT, that does that fine on a minimum of resource uh, Windows resources. And I have never had a complaint from LXDE being difficult to use or um unstable or anything like that lxde it's my go-to desktop uh, environment of choice um when i'm putting it on someone else's computer because it's just so simple and once it's configured you don't have to worry about it and also because it's it, because it's smaller and simpler there's less to go wrong it's the keep it simple stupid philosophy so mm. great comment there nathan jennings i i'm sure you speak for more than a few people with that oh uh justin crosser says it uh, in reference to the pro Microsoft podcast, the second episode. It wasn't Pirate Bay that was taken down by the FBI. It was Mega Upload by Kim dot com, which is now gone. But there is a similar website called Mega in its place. That I yes, I realised that like after I finished the podcast, um, it was yeah, it was Mega, um, or uh, yeah, Mega Upload. Okay, here's another pretty important comment, actually. Uh, Yarpos. Yarpos says, I use and like Mint. However, they seem to put little or no importance on kernel upgrades. I assume the many levels of kernel upgrades were done for good reason. Mint seem to have washed their hands and left it up to the user, which doesn't seem like a great fit for a less capable Windows consumer users uh, the DTE seems aimed at. Uh, appreciate other people's thoughts. Okay, um... <sighs> Okay, ooh, there there are two sides to this story, and it depends who you ask. Uh, so, the Linux Mint traditional philosophy is not to update the kernel; it's to find a kernel, a long-term support kernel that works for you, and just stick with that for two years until you upgrade to the next version of of Linux Mint, pretty much. Um, some people will say that's problematic because it means that security holes can be left in there for rather long periods of time. But then you could also look at uh, running a computer in the same way of, as like surviving the zombie apocalypse. Uh, that old maxim that you don't have to be the fastest runner, you just don't be the slowest. And that's kind of maybe the thing with security on the internet is that with all these vulnerable Windows users about, you're not the path of least resistance for con men and hackers, maybe. Maybe. I'm you know, that's that's a pure speculative thought. Don't like quote me on that. Um But yeah, like very, very few people are going to become victim to some kind of hack as a result of not having the latest kernel. Uh if it was a server, whole different story. But it's not. I mean 
for example, you know, you, you can't like some people are like assuming use cases. For example, uh, I administrate a computer that's only job is to operate a printer. That's its sole purpose. Sole purpose. So, is there really any need to have like as once I found software that works? Um, why even bother updating it at, at the risk of regressions? So. Um, you know, if, if you've, I mean, in theory, you could even have an unsupported version of Ubuntu on there, and the chances of something bad happening to you, uh, at least on that particular machine, uh, were fine. You know, like, 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 uh, you know, the chances of something bad happening are, are, are non-existent practically because it just operates a printer. You know, um, anyway, that, that, I mean, that's that's effectively sort of my my thought process on it is that sometimes an up-to-date kernel is is a, is necessary in 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 the case of running a server. Sometimes sometimes it's not if you're running a machine that's not super on on you know on the internet. Um, the new version uh, Mint eighteen gives you a choice. It, you boot it up and you uh, and and I think the wording of it's actually quite good as well. Uh, it's update everything, but it might not be super stable. Um, and there's um, update only the safe stuff and then there's let me choose uh and i think those are the three three good options there so uh so mint 18 seems to have taken that criticism on board to a degree um let's see ah uh zero toy uh left a comment which i, I particularly want to address uh they say that i spelt where wrong uh, loves you, love your vids though. Smiley face. Thank you. Always nice to get a compliment. It it it, it does warm my day to be honest. Uh, so, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, okay, so yeah, um, this is a play on my uh, name. In in case, uh, yeah. So it's who, what, where. Um, it's a play on my name, and I really liked it. Um, it was um, thought up by my friend Meg, who also left a comment that I'm going to be talking about. Um, yeah, so like when Meg basically like recommended it to me, um, I, I, I thought, damn, and I, I thought on it for about two weeks, and I, I want to change my, my channel to it. So I did, I changed the channel name, I um, have to, like, oh man, I took a, I took a, um, uh, a beating when it came to views, uh, but I think that generally happens when you just change the change a name. And I think that um, it takes about three months for like any kind of content on the internet to reach like search engine like sort of height. The the most visibility or you, you know things usually take about three months. So uh, at least it's summer where the views tend to go down anyway. Um, so so you kind of plan for that anyway. But yeah, uh, no, yeah, I like it because it's kind of a pun on my name. Who, what, where. Uh, which which is kind of cool because uh, I you know like it was the, the channel was originally called Chris Ware Digital and that's not a very creative name, uh, but I just ran with it because I couldn't think of anything better. But um, but I, I like who what where a lot better, so I decided to go. So so I decided to run with it. Uh, yeah, Meg's comment is just thanks for saying how brilliant and clever I am for thinking it all up. Um, she's insanely good with like naming stuff. It's weird. It's it's brilliant. Um, also, yes, check out her channel. If uh, she does like um, travel blogs and a uh, little bit of art history stuff there. So if you're into travel and art history, check out her channel. It's pretty good. Uh, Inglip Owen says uh, easier, faster. Okay, this is on the how to securely wipe a hard disk drive. Um, and Inglip Owen says, easier, faster, and just as secure with one pass of zeros. So, uh, and then and then they leave the uh, commands for how to uh, erase a drive by just writing all zeros on it instead of random data. Okay, and I think I'm going to just uh, round it off with the last comment from Dude3650. My favorite Ubuntu distro is GNOME. I, GNOME? GNOME? Crikey. I, like, the thing is, I watch a lot of videos about Linux online as well, and some people call it GNOME and some people call it GNOME, and and, and I seem to switch from one to the other. Um, I love the, the um, GNOME or GNOME desktop environment. Um, it's a little resource heavy for my liking, which is why I don't tend to use it personally, but it looks really good. 
I love the workflow. Like I love the idea that you can just 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 put the cursor up in the top left hand corner of the screen, and all your windows are laid out in like nice little rows with what's on them right in front of you. Like that's that's a really easy way to just look at your your current workflow situation. I like how they switch desktops. I like that they've got a list of most commonly used. Um, you know, like your, your favorite applications on the, on the left-hand side. It looks absolutely beautiful. Um, and I hear that it's very good on um, uh, high-definition screens, but um, I don't have a high-definition screen, so... Um, so that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that is about um, it. Um, oh, uh, just on, just go back to the uh, the gnome comment. Uh, I, whereas I love the gnome desktop environment, Ubuntu gnome um, doesn't seem to have done that much with it. Which is a, you know, I mean, it's it's a fine distribution. And if I wanted uh, gnome on Ubuntu, I would install Ubuntu gnome edition. Okay, actually, I'm going to do one more comment because it's quick and easy to answer. Uh, Rob Vanderberg asks, how do you render those audio waveforms? So sometimes when I do an audio-only video, I just put some waveforms up there just so there's something visual to see. Um, because setting up lighting for... I, I, I'm i going to do more videos with my face on them at some point. Um, I probably won't be doing browser reviews with my face on them at, uh, anymore. Um, I, I don't see what that adds, but I might do more like vlogs with video or not. Um, but it's just so much easier to do an audio vlog, blog, um, and uh, and it allows me to put more of them out quicker. Um, but it's uh, you know it's uh, but I might I might go back to doing a few more of the of the video ones as well. Um, but I do the audio waveforms in Caden Live. Now this is I don't know what version of Caden Live is included with the latest version of, of Ubuntu or Mint, but the latest version included in Manjaro, it's really good. Like, Caden Live has just come so far in the past couple of years. Uh, it's even, like, a lot more stable than it used to be. Uh, so I, it's definitely my, my video editor of choice. It's absolutely fantastic, and it's coming on in leaps and bounds. Um, but, yeah, one of the... Uh, so if you get, like, a... Um, a, a like a dot wav file or a dot mp3 and you stick it on the timeline for Caden live um if you put it into a video track and then i think you go to i don't know if it's audio effects or it's just somewhere in the effects category uh, and it's called i think there's waveform in the title like you can find it there's a lot of them in there but um but yeah it's in it's in Caden live and uh, it works pretty well you get to choose the colors um and, and you get to customize it quite a lot and you get a nice transparent background, so you can have a backdrop of something relevant. You know, you can have a backdrop of a nice relevant image with with the waveforms. I like how I did it in a in a recent video where I just had the waveform as a small little box in the corner. So anyway, guys, thank you very much uh, for making it to the end of this video. Uh, let me know if you did. Let me know if you did. Um, I'm just looking at a recommendation here. Ghost BSD. Someone wants me to try it. Ghost BSD, which I should. I, I, I should, but. Man, are there so many distributions. I'm going to, one of these days, I'm going to do just like a distribution. Um, you know, like I'll spend three days on a whole bunch of distributions and go through a whole load of them and then just do a, do a whole load of uh, reviews off the back of that at some point. Um, but if you've made it all the way to the end of this far into the video, just talk about BSD or Ghost BSD. What do you think about it? Do you think that it's a good alternative to, to, to Linux in case Linux for some reason goes in a, in a bad direction? If Linux goes in a bad direction, of course, you could always fork it and then whatever. But uh, BSD, they have, you know, they have a, uh, it, it's, God, it's, you know, I was very impressed with PC BSD. I think as a desktop, um, it's got potential, um, but it's, 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 I mean, it's, 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 it's no Linux, but, um, but I like that there is a, a place to go to if, if for one reason Linux isn't there, you know, it, it isn't an option and, uh, and and bsd does look like that i mean you can even find open broadcaster software in uh pc bsd so it's it's got lots of packages and uh and it's pretty promising so there's one more thing just before i go uh this channel who what where does have a patreon 
Uh, and I wanted to leave it at the end because I don't want like the Patreon to be a thing. Um, next year, I might sort of like raise it in a, in a little bit more of a vocal capacity. But um, the reason I'm raising it with you is not because I'm trying to tap you up for for money for for my own back pocket. But um, if you go to the uh, patreon.com forward slash who what where I'll, I'll put a link in the description uh you'll see some of the milestones that i want to kind of uh, have achieved so for example the first one which is like ten dollars a month like if if you know it, it, it's um to upgrade the soundcloud um podcast thing and then you know it gets to i think it gets to a certain point and then i'll take adverts off videos and things like that so it's it's you know it's it, it, it's not like um it's it's just to offset some of the costs of the channel if you want um if you want to donate to it donate to it if you don't don't it's perfectly fine lots or little it's uh it's it's uh it it, it, it doesn't matter too much to me at the moment because of course it's 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 going straight into the channel so um and also just just on a side note i just i want to say this now because it's a concrete policy of mine never ever ever will content from this channel or on the who what web uh podcast or anything like that be behind a paywall i'll never do anything like that um and the reason for that is is because linux is open source and it's about spreading knowledge you know, like getting knowledge out there, getting, uh, you know, getting getting projects out there, getting like, you know, stuff that we've done, code and 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 work and energy, uh, you know, the the energy and the effort that we've put into to building all these projects, and 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 then sending them out into the world. Uh, you know, putting stuff behind a paywall just is not in the spirit of that. It's ridiculous. The idea is, let's be honest, it's ridiculous. So, but I want to I want to like stamp that now, right? If if that's a concern on any single put that will never happen on this channel never happen on this channel promise 100 percent promise you can completely unequivocally hold me to that if for some reason this goes uh goes exceptionally well i might stick a few quid in uh, in matt's back pocket for always help for helping me on the old podcast um he's he's been a really supportive uh content creator as well uh which is why i asked him to be on the podcast also, I asked him to be on the podcast because he is not like the super most techiest of person, but he can certainly he certainly knows his way around a computer, and he's also a Mac uh, person as well. So, um, so I think there's a good contrast there as well. And he's also, you know, I think he's pretty good on um, on podcasting and stuff like that as well. So, um, so that's why I chose him uh, for the for the podcast. Also, like he's he's. Um, uh, he he acts almost like as a as a, as a, a like not 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 a, not a filter, but. Um, he puts me in, you know, it's a good frame of mind to be in when I'm explaining something to someone that might not necessarily be inside the, the Linux world and inside the Linux ecosystem. So it's a good way of sort of broadening the, the tech side of things. Um, and we didn't do one last week, so I'm sorry for that. But um, sometimes schedules are just chaotic. I'm really going to try and build up a, a, a regular schedule for it. But... Uh, these things are these things are difficult. So anyway, guys, thank you for listening to me ramble on and on and on and on and on. But uh, but it's been a lot of fun, and I look forward to reading the comments out of the uh, from this video. Um, and feel free to leave comments because comments on comment commentaries will also be on future comment commentaries. Um, so that's about it for me today. Thank you very 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 much for listening and watching, especially this far. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.